A big thank you to Jero for sponsoring today's video on Patreon. Hilda versus Troven. Uh, we have a two lander into uh, Azoria Signet with some tap effects. I think we have to keep this and hope that we get into more lands. Our opponent plays out Yavamaya, so we could not crack the Scalding Tarn, but I think fixing our colours this early in the game would be intelligent. And we do manage to get into an island, so I'll throw that out into the Azoria Signet and hopefully get our commander in next turn. There's a Saga from our opponent, and uh, that is a Far Seek, fixes the blue mana. Alright, so instead of our commander, maybe getting down the Teferi would be a good idea. Whilst there's no creatures or counter magic held up on our opponent's side of the field. And that way we'll be able to ramp with this as well. It can untap our Azoria Signet and the island, so would be a good idea, I think. So I think we take the card advantage here while we can, because there's not much point in holding up the mana if we're not going to be doing anything. That is a Dream Shackle Geist, uh, but I think the land is going to be more useful to us here. We've got tap stuff available to us. The Urza Saga can make a construct here, but I wouldn't have thought our opponent would go for that. It is a Kodama's Reach instead. So our opponent dropping the land in tapped and playing the land that he tutored up straight away. And we draw into another land in the Nimbus Maze. We do control a plains and an island, as well as a bunch of forests. So let's get this Hilda down. Probably best to float some mana to do this, and then we can tick up on the Teferi and tap down their um, blue source here. Probably going to be a good habit to get into. Although our opponent could always float the blue mana in response. Decided not to there, so we'll just assume that he doesn't have a means of uh, countering with a force spike or something. Obviously no creatures to tap on our opponent's side of the field, so Hilda not particularly useful at the moment. Which is my main concern with her, really. She's not going to do much of anything until your opponents actually play creatures, and creatures aren't all that popular in Commander or Magic Online, because everyone plays blue control builds, really. You get a lot of spikes on MTGO, so the Urza's land being turned into a Sol Ring, and that takes our opponent into Tatyova, which is a creature that we can tap down, of course. And of course, our opponent does have a fetch into the Tatyova, going to draw two and gain two life. Our opponent gets into Mana Crypt as well, now has five mana available. Into Wood Elves for more life gain and card draw. Looks as though our opponent's tapping out at least. Getting down the Triang Gutsy Explorer. So throwing a Narcolepsy onto that should be pretty good. There's an Intangible Virtue ready for what will be 5-5 five, five Vigilance tokens. So I think we just go slow here. Let's go for, yeah, the Share and the Narcolepsy. That will tap us out, but we can untap a couple of mana with the Teferi. So we'll put a stun counter on the Tatyova. And that will draw us a card, because it's tapped down this turn. The Hilda will trigger for the first time. And I think we will make a 4-4 Elemental with that. Alright, that gets us into a land now. Tick up on the Teferi. We will untap the Azoria Signet. Tap down our opponent's commander. And untap the Command Tower. And so we could put another mana into the Hilda. I don't suppose it really matters. We could do it now. So we'll say yes here. And go for another 4-4. Four, four. And then it can be Narcolepsy onto our opponent's commander. So that he can't as easily tap it down for mana. And we'll swing in with the Hilda in towards the 1-1. One, one. Plenty of chump blockers to protect the Teferi. So our opponent's commander untaps during the untap phase. Which happens before the upkeep. Then we go through to the upkeep. Narcolepsy triggers and taps this thing down. So they're going to need instant speed stuff in order to be able to make use of the Trojan, which they could have. Deciding to make use of this now, draw a card and discard a card in response. So if we're going to have them use a blue mana on that every turn, it does mean that the Narcolepsy isn't going to trigger the Hilda, but we are swallowing up a mana of theirs every turn. They discarded a land to that, by the way. Now our opponent making use of all that fast mana. Big X spell here, I imagine. It is a reshape the earth, search for 10 lands, put them into play tapped. Six cards in our opponent's hand at the moment, but they are going to draw to the Tatyova here. As well as maybe do a bunch of lands matter shenanigans, field of the dead and the like. Yep, so we see a strip mine, a field of the dead, Gaia's cradle. Uh, they're the main culprits really. We've got a moss warp bridge that will probably be active as well. The Bounce Land takes the Guy's Cradle back to hand, so probably wants to play it in as his land for the turn. 
So playing the guy's cradle, they have 10 zombies and drawing again to the Tatyova, making another zombie. So guy's cradle tapping for 14 mana with 17 cards in hand. Kodama of the East Tree will get some free spells out. Elvish Mystic, that will be able to get more free lands into play. Kodama's Reach does get another land into play off the Mana Dork, which means another token comes into play, which can mean more free landfall. So they can do this indefinitely as long as they're getting a zombie token on landfall, and the Kodama stays in play. Not worthy that there's a Homeward Path here as well. Don't think we have a means of stealing our opponent's creatures away. Reliquary Tower for an infinite hand size. And all the lands are cantripping thanks to the Tatyova of course, so that will be relevant. And our opponent decided to stop there with 15 cards in hand, so could still have lands. Decided not to put them in with Kodama. Now Rude Awakening, untapping all the lands. Shark Typhoon. Our opponent gets a free Silverback Elder. Huh, <laughs> Mind Slaver, so that's probably the end of this game. Yeah, it's a shame, I thought it was going well for us there, but we are in the 1v1 room on Magic Online and... Like I said, it gets pretty spiky. This isn't historic brawl on Arena, this is, uh, yeah, about right for 1v1 Commander. Got a free Thunderous Snapper. Palancron will be infinite mana most likely. Draws a card, destroys our Signet. Alright, so I think we get the idea here. I don't really like to scoop on my opponents before they're done doing what they're doing, but I don't think our opponent's doing anything particularly special here. It just looks like a generic Simic Lands Matter deck with um, some good stuff ETBs and uh, yeah, we're really eager to get some actual Hilda of the Icy Crown gameplay so I will say good game to my opponent and uh, yeah, we'll try again shall we? Huh, just went for Cascade on the Apex Devastator at the end there. Up against Rin and Seri now so hopefully this will be a more fun build here, a Ganjo that's the wrong, a Ganjo <laughs> Meant to add the most recent one and uh, added this instead. I'll have to change that later. But not keeping this anyway. Could have gone Foreign Light and Tutor into Fast Mana, but that doesn't help us with our mana fixing anyway. Uh, okay, a Mana Vault into Teferi again might be okay. Forbidden Orchard gives our opponent creatures as well, although we shouldn't struggle against that in this deck. So we'll try this and get rid of the Sunblast Angel. It will have to be a Forbidden Orchard, giving our opponent a creature immediately. Not sure if we need the Forbidden Orchard in this deck in 1v1. I'm not exactly looking to beat really masterful Teferi Temporal Archmage decks and stuff like that. And um, obviously creatures can start swinging into our Planeswalkers as well. So yeah, it's supposed to be in here as an enabler. But it might be more useful in multiplayer decks where you're seeing constant board wipes. Anyway, once we get down Hilda and start making some 4-4 tokens, maybe the Spirit tokens won't be as relevant. Alright, an elite scale guard for us, so not drawing into a land unfortunately. Teferi can untap our mana vaults, so I think we're fine going for that here. They will have two power to swing in at our planeswalker unfortunately. So maybe we just go for the elite scale guard then, so that we can actually block. Turned out to be not a terrible draw after all then. Puts a couple of plus counters on itself, because it does have bolster too. Alright, so can't put the mana into mana vault even if we wanted to. Okay, that's a Voltaic Key. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we can untap with that as well. I don't know if we're going to bother here. We'll float a blue mana with the Reflecting Pool, and then it can be a tick up on Teferi again. Tap the Spirit Token, untap both of our things. And we can see how Teferi, who slows the sunset, is useful in this deck. So then that means we can get our Commander down. And might as well throw out the Voltaic Key as well. And at the end of our opponent's turn, we'll probably untap this thing so that we've got it available straight away. But might even get the emblem onto Fairy, because we've been pretty lucky against our opponent here. Hasn't been too quick. Swing him for four. And tap down the spirit token. And if we're going to do that, we might as well just go for the ability on our commander. Obviously means that we're not going for the mana vault thing next turn, but... Our opponent's going to have to dedicate a couple of creatures into the red zone. Alright, blocking with a spirit token means he can't go wide onto fairy. So that keeps the uh, that keeps the emblem online for us. Still hasn't fixed his colours yet, unfortunately. And then we see a fleece main lion. Do have to be careful against Rin and Seri because he will be able to go wide on us quite easily. I imagine he has overrun effects in the deck, so 
That might include the spirit tokens that we've given him. All right, there's an icy blast. We're not doing a terrible job of tapping down our opponent's stuff here. So why don't we float a white mana with the reflecting pool, then do the Teferi thing again, tap down the fleece main lion, and untap the reflecting pool. And then when Hilda triggers, we can tap down the mana vault, untap it with the voltaic key just for the sake of doing it. And then yes on her ability gets us into another 4-4 and then we might as well go for the citadel siege giving our opponent another spirit token so it turns out that the uh, forbidden orchard is doing quite well for us double check on this i think it's dragons yes tap down at the beginning of our opponent's combat step and let's just hold back here i think for now because if we can get this emblem onto fairy that would be really cool I think taking at least one trigger next turn to put plus counters on everything would be useful because this thing cares about plus counters and it's a means of us tapping down a bunch of stuff. The cat dog player is still struggling on red mana, unfortunately. And there we see a troll warden. Nothing in their graveyard yet. Citadel siege. Um, get rid of the troll warden or at least tap it down because that has four toughness, so. It's going to be able to block our commander, I think. Uh, mana Vault, do we want to tap down here? Yeah, we'll do the plus counter thing now. So yeah, if I thought that out, we could have left this untapped if we were going to encourage them to block with it, but I don't think it really matters here. Could also have made another elemental token there and then done plus counters during our turn. All right, there's a Swords to Plowshares. It's probably worth holding up. I'm going to be greedy and try and hold on to the Teferi here. So we'll just float some white mana. Then it's untap mana vault, tap down the fleece main lion, untap the reflecting pool. And then the white mana that we floated can go into... Uh, we'll go scry 2 and draw this time. Alright, there's a Nykthos. Elvish Mariner is another interesting one, but we need lands here really. So we'll scry Elvish Mariner on the bottom, put the Nykthos on top and play that. And we've actually got 5 white mana off the Nykthos if we want it. So we'll attack him with the elite scale guard. And that can tap down a spirit token. And we'll just make another token with the Hilda here. Another forest for our opponents, so still doesn't have any red mana. Ha, <laughs> there's a doubling season though, so yeah, that is any effect that it cares about. So that means Forbidden Orchard is going to make two tokens under their control. Citadel Siege will tap down the Fleece Main Lion. And we will put mana into the Hilda to make another token. So we'll try our best. We've got the Mana Vault untapped this time at the beginning of the turn. We'll try our best not to tap down the Forbidden Orchard. Scalding Tarn should make that easier. Crack that for Tundra straight away. So I'm going to minus down on the Teferi to get the Emblem straight away. So now we untap everything during each of our opponent's untap steps and draw a card during their draw steps as well. So now we're fine to just wail on our opponent, I think. Just tap down the Mana Vault with Reckless Abandon. Tap down a spirit, tap down a spirit, and a trove warden as well. And we're obviously going to put mana into all this because it will trigger the Hilda. So we'll make the tokens first and then we will go for the plus counters. And our opponent just taking the damage obviously doesn't have any blockers, knocking him down to seven. And unfortunately our opponent hasn't done too well on the colours here. He's been slower than us thanks to the mana vault and to fairy early on in the game as well. We drew into a Betrayal, so enchanting that onto one of our opponent's creatures and then consistently tapping it down should be good. But yeah, I wasn't too sure about Forbidden Orchard there, but it's been good in this game. Could obviously give my opponent two more creatures here. A Regal Caracal. Uh, that is Lifelink on his cats. So we'll allow that into play. Obviously could mana drain it, but don't want to dunk on my opponent too much here. Also don't want to patronise my opponent though. Uh, Citadel Siege can tap something down, we'll just go for the Regal Caracal. And yeah, our opponent deciding to give it up there, probably would have gone for floating a bunch of white mana with the Nykthos, and then maybe we could have tapped down most of his stuff with an Icy Blast in order to finish him off. We were just drawing into more mana and a couple of enchantments there. But yeah, pretty commanding one for us, but in no small part thanks to the fact that our opponent couldn't fix his colours. We'll try again. Alright, up against Shire this time. And you know, we've got a bit of ramp, some tap and draw stuff. And yeah, we'll try it. Shield Sphere on turn one for our opponent. And there we see a Delvin's Veto. Just have to keep praying for lands. A Cover of Darkness for our opponent. B3 
be interesting to see what creature type they choose there. Okay, interestingly, chose back with that. Uh, Voltaic Key, not of much use to us. We'd just go for the Solitary Sanctuary, I think. Apparently went for Bat Tribal. We draw into a landing Nick, though, so... Yeah, I think we're fine to get down the Hilda. An interesting deck our opponent seems to have built. A Waste Knot this time. Then swinging in at us for one with the Bat. Mana Drains, so we've got... All the counter magic, apparently. Um, yeah, it would be good to get down the Tamio here, but doesn't seem as though it's going to be happening. Might as well go for the Voltaic Key. Eternal Thirst now. Our opponent can't afford the Extort cost. And the Enchanted Creature has Lifelink. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus counter on it. Our opponent seems to be struggling on lands about as much as we are. So turns in sideways with the rat that has Fear, Lifelink and Flying. And a land here is excellent. So that means that we can go for the Tundra into the Tamio, and that will give us additional um, Blue Devotion, which is relevant against the Nykthos, but it also means that we can stop this bat from swinging in at us. Still no lands from our opponent, but he's still managing to do stuff. When this dies, draw a card and lose a life. Alright, that's an Ancient Tomb, so getting into the mana finally. Let's go for Tamio onto... Uh, yeah, I'm not particularly bothered about swinging in. We'll go for the Novice Occultist. Just so that we can make a 4-4 here. Plus counter will go onto our commander from the Sanctuary. And again the Shield Sphere is holding us back. I suppose we should have been swinging in here because it does get debuffed the more it blocks. Another Flyer, this time in the form of Arcbound Stinger. Not sure what our opponent's aiming for here. And deciding not to attack in at the Tamio because we will be able to draw a couple of cards to that. Another land for us. We'll tap down the Basilica Screecher. And do the same thing as we did last turn. Plus counter on the elemental token this time. And then let's actually start attacking in against this shield sphere. Cryptic Trilobite now. Just putting one into X of course. Alright and this time our opponent deciding to swing in at the Tamio. We'll give our opponent a card draw. See if he can get into a land off that. And getting into a swamp that's good. Alright that is a grim monolith for us. Which is good with the uh, Voltaic key. So let's just play that out straight away. Tap down the Stinger this time. Plus counter on the Elemental token. And once again go for another token whilst the game's going so slow. Obviously could be going Scry 2 and draw in order to actually get into some relevant stuff here. But it's slowly but surely working for us. Attacking for 14 points of damage. The Shield Sphere can't block very well here. It will go down to 4 toughness when it blocks our commander. And these are all creatures that can come back with the Shire of course. And our opponent managing to make a fourth land, that is a Westvale Abbey this time. Into a Basalt Monolith, which I have to imagine, I always assume that they can make infinite mana with this. Uh, into extra planar lens. Um, uh, is it mean? I was planning on going for a Cyclonic Rift here. I mean, our opponent's not doing too much of anything. I wonder why he played the Basalt Monolith into extra planar lens. They're both three mana. Maybe he's got a Voltaic Key himself. So obviously we could let him exile a land here and then Cyclonic Rift, but our opponents uh, not had the best of luck here, so we'll play nice. A plus counter going on to the Trilobite, and the bat does go in at Tamio, so maybe going for the minus two on that, seeing as how we're not going to get the limit break without killing her off. Uh, maybe the minus two to draw three would be good. Actually try and get this game moving. So obviously the play here would be to Rift and bounce all our opponent's stuff, but pretty try hard, so... We will just get through to our turn. There's an island. Minus two on the Tamio is draw three. And <laughs> just gets us into more lands. There's a Curse of Chains. So that's a good way to consistently tap something down. We'll put that on the bat. Gives us some more devotion as well into Nykthos. But yeah, nothing getting tapped down here, unfortunately. Not until our opponent's next turn, anyway. Turn everything in sideways again. And down they plummet to eight. So we'll see if they can do anything during their turn here. Get to see some Curse of Chains tech here anyway. It's good for 1v1 in particular because we don't have to put mana into it being tapped and it does mean it will consistently be tapped. Meaning that we just get to hold up our mana to put into the Hilda itself. And we'll put another 4-4 into play to chump block the Trilobite. So swinging into the Planeswalker again but too little too late at this point I think. Unless they've got a trick up their sleeve. There's a Shelob's Ambush. Target creature gets plus one, plus two, and Death Touch. And they pay the extort cost on that. Not particularly bothered about the ambush, in all honesty. 
They do have floating mana, so they might as well crack the food token before they pass through to the blocking phase. And they do gaining three life. And they removed a plus counter with this to uh, use the two mana inactivated abilities to untap the Basalt Monolith. Oh, looks like we're going wide on our opponent here. <laughs> Another land for us, that pretty much sums this game up. Well, luckily our opponent had worse luck than we did. And decide to scoop it up before we get to turn in sideways. Um, yeah, still not satisfied with this Hilda. I can't understand all the rave reviews of this commander, in all honesty. I suppose it depends on your meta. If the group you play with is a slower meta that actually plays creatures, then... Yeah, I suppose it could be a good commander, but... It's way too clunky and needs too many things to go right for my liking. Yeah, once it actually gets going, it is a fun one, so... Hopefully you all enjoyed watching Hilda of the Icy Crown. Massive thank you to the patrons for their constant support as ever. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.